Hello, welcome back to WePC. Today we're going to be showing you how to build a computer. It's going to involve the installation of your CPU, your motherboard, your RAM, your PSU and all of that. And we'll finish off at the end with a bit of cable management. This is how to install a CPU. In this case, we have the Ryzen 3400G and you get your standard stock cooler as well. As you can see with your CPU, you have a little arrow in the corner, looks like a little triangle, only in one corner. Now you're going to want to line that up with the triangle you see on the AM4 socket there. This is of course AMD compatible motherboard as you can see. The pins are on this side which is different to Intel. Okay. So first you release the lever then you line up your arrows and you drop the chip into place like so and then close the lever. Here we have the AMD Wraith Spire that comes free with most of the CPUs. So next we're going to remove the brackets as these are not for the Wraith Spire, these are for the Wraith Prism. Now these brackets are screwed into the back plate which I'll show you in a minute and that's what our cooler is going to screw into. That just pops off. And there is the back plate. But of course you want to keep that in because we're now going to screw the cooler in place. Um, if you've touched the CPU like I did, you can always use rubbing alcohol and a cloth just to get away, rid of the grease or whatever and the grime. That way your thermal paste is going to work much better as well. So now we're going to apply thermal paste. Um, there's a few different methods you can use. The most popular are the P method and the X method. But we're going to go with the P because generally the performance is the same. Um, it's called the P method because you are simply putting a blob the size of a P in the middle. Like so. And then when you place the cooler on top, it will flatten out and spread across the CPU. And then once you've got it in place, you can carefully screw in the sides. So when you are screwing it in, you're going to want to screw it in just a little bit either side and then you get it even. And then we can tighten it up at the end. And then just give it a little time. Now remember not to do it too tight or your board will bend. But don't worry too much. And there you go. Okay, now the connector that it comes with, the 4 pin, you're going to want to connect it to the CPU fan 1, which you'll find next to your RAM at the top of the board. And that just simply goes in like so. And then with this, you don't want to just leave it lying around, so just tuck that in underneath, like so. And you've installed a CPU. This is how to install RAM. We've got 3000 megahertz Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM here. And it's 16 gigabytes, more than enough for this budget PC. Let's try and get in the packaging. And there we are. Don't forget to peel off the plastic. It's on every stick. Okay, so then when installing RAM, you'll see this here, we call it a dual channel. You've got four RAM slots with the, so you, and they're color coded. So you have slots one and three and two and four. Now most motherboards, generally you will put the RAM in slots two and four, but you should check your manual. It will tell you which slots to go for. Anyway, installing the RAM is really quite simple. You line it up, slide it in, and then wait for the click. And then you do it again with this stick. And there you have RAM installed. Now it's time to install the motherboard into the PC case. So before we install the motherboard, we're first going to put in the IO shield right at the back of the PC case, which will slide into place just here. And it'll clip in like that. And there's the click. Now remember it's important to install your standoff screws as you will end up destroying your motherboard. 
So what this does is it grounds the motherboard. So next, as you can see, there's no standoff screws in this, apart from the one in the middle. So we're going to install them, you just screw them in like normal. Now as you can see, it's labelled with M and A, A and M. The A is ATX and the M is MATX. So today we're installing an ATX board, so we'll be using the ones labelled with A. Uh, most cases come with a little tool like this. Now this is for putting your standoff in, like so. And then you basically put that on the slot and it screws the standoff in for you. Now it's time to install the motherboard into the case. First you want to line it up with your IO shield and pop that through. And then really, thanks to the middle one, it slots right into place perfectly. If you're ever unsure about installing your case wires, you can always consult the manual. It'll let you know exactly where to go. Okay, so now the motherboard is screwed in place, we need to connect the front panel of the case, which is your on button reset switch, um, to the actual motherboard so they work. Now, as you can see, they're all labeled and usually you have the plus pin, which is also labelled towards the left. But you can consult your manual if you're struggling with this part. So first we're going to do the power LED, which goes top left. Again, with the plus pin to the left. And then we're going to do the power and reset switch next. Okay, so next up we're going to install the USB 3.0, so you can use those ports on your case. Now you'll see there's a little notch. You want to match that up with that notch. And be careful, because you don't want to bend the pins, but you also have to give it enough force to click in like so. Next it's the USB, let's say a 2.0 or 2.1, depending on what you've got. And that just slats in like so. Okay, so lastly we're going to be installing the HD audio which goes at the end here, in the corner. I'll just slot that into place, like so. So next we're going to install the fans, which is really quite simple. Uh, this case comes with two pre-installed 120mm fans and three pin headers. So we're going to plug these straight into the board, as we don't have a fan controller with this board. So these can go anywhere if you have the room, as you can see there's one over here. Um, just look for the fan headers. And really it's wherever you feel is good for cable management later. But for the sake of this, we'll plug these in there and we'll deal with the wires later. And that's your motherboard installed. This is how to install a power supply. So here we have the Thermaltake PSU. It's the Smart RGB 500 watt version, um, which is probably a bit too powerful for this budget build but gives them room for future upgrades if they ever want to install a graphics card. Don't forget to take off the plastic. Here we have a non-modular power supply, as you can see by the bouquet of wires. But it's not a problem, it'll work fine. First things first, we're going to screw this into our case. Now both your power supply and your case will come with PSU screws. These are the big chunky ones. And they can also be used in your motherboard if you're desperate. So next you're going to want to feed your wires out the back. Um, very little hole in this case, so we're gonna have to actually do that one by one. So first let's plug in the CPU wire. Now normally on a power supply this will be labelled CPU, but you can tell it apart from a PCI cable for your graphics card, as it's only got 8 pin, whereas this has an extra 8 pins for your GPU. So with this, if your case accommodates for it, the best thing to do is go straight in the top there. and then it's gonna click in place onto this, okay? 
width. I don't know if you can see that, the clippy thing, but this goes at the top. So it's going to take a bit of bending and then click the click. And there you go, that's in place now. As this is an office build, we're not actually going to have a GPU, so we won't be needing that. We're literally only going to need the 24 pin to power the board and then a SATA connector for the SSD. So for the 24 pin, you're going to want to go in at the slot nearest to where it goes. Again with the clip on the outside, so give it a little bit of a bend, line it up and then push in. Make sure it's firmly in. And then to give the SSD power, we're simply going to connect the SATA power cable just onto here, next to the other SATA cable. And that just simply slots in place. And now is cable management. So if you want, you can just throw these in your case, but if not, you can tie them up. This is how to install an SSD. We've got a Samsung 860 Evo here, it's 250 gigabyte. So with this case, you install the SSD or hard drive if you've got it into the caddy, which then slots back into there, out of the way. To install it, you simply screw it in, make sure your connector end is at the back, like so. Okay, now we just slide this into the caddy and then we're going to want to connect up the SATA cable. Okay, so next we're going to install the SATA cable and we're going into number one. These days that doesn't really matter, but for good practice, always put your SSD in slot one there. Plugging this in, sometimes the case can get in the way, so you just take the caddy out and then slot that in. Now be careful with that because you can snap the plastic. And now you've installed an SSD. So after you've plugged in your cables here, you're going to want to feed them through the cutout holes that you see all around your case, basically. And then that brings them all out <coughs> towards the back. Now I've already cable tied some together at the bottom there, just to keep them in place. But we're going to show you how to manage your cables and get them all nice and neat. So as you can see, I've stuck a tie base where I think, where I want the cables to run. And I have the front panel wires underneath, hidden by the large 24 pin connector wire. That's gonna look like this later on after we've tied it. We want to bunch them together. That's why I've tied this here to make it easier. And then you simply tighten your cable ties, make sure they're all how you like them. Like this. And the whole point of this is to make it look like you've got one solid cable coming out the back rather than that massive clump of mess that you would normally see. Or if you're looking there like that. These tie bases, as I said, are a sticky back. And will go wherever you like, like that. Now, to remove them, you can grab them with your cable cutters and they come off nicely. Carrying on, you can see here, we've only got the front panel wires left up here. Again, make sure they're tight and coming up. You want to, you want this like so. And then you're going to push the excess through the front. And if you have a drive bay, you can stash them in there. Um, and that's your PC ready. So there you have it. You now know the basics of how to build a computer. Um, of course, if that was a bit too much for you, you can always buy a pre-built, which we sell over at wepc.com. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.